What is up everyone? My name is Rich. This is Theme Park Motivation and today I'm going to go over the top 10 most affordable theme parks in America for the 2024 season. So if you know the channel, what I like to do is save people money. So what really inspired me was looking at Forbes and USA Today and their ranking of some of these parks and I just thought I could do a better job. Although some of their parks that they ranked as the top most affordable parks are on my list. So I do agree with them to some extent. However, I am basing mine off of attractions offered at the park. These are places that have lodging available and have other attractions in the area or offer water parks and things of that nature. So in coming up with my ticket prices and hotel prices, I basically took the most peak season, which would be anywhere between the middle of June all the way till the middle of August, and I averaged them out for that area. Everybody knows that ticket prices at the park are not what you pay unless you're paying at the gate. I made this video for families, so my number will be for four members in a family. It's not too hard to figure out, plus or minus the ticket cost as I go over all of the ticket prices or average ticket prices per park. And I go over the pros and cons of each park as well. I think you guys will be very surprised with my number one most affordable park, so stay tuned for that. Smash that subscribe button. All of my top 10 picks are destination parks, meaning you could spend two to three days at each one of these places. And Dollywood is no exception to this. In fact, I would say spend two to three days here because the ticket prices are $89 for a single day ticket and $119 for a two day ticket, going up to $129 for a three day ticket. Dollywood is my number 10 pick for most affordable park. Ticket prices are expensive for a single day ticket, but like I said, this is a destination park. You don't go here just for Dollywood. You check out the mountain coasters, Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg have so much to do. The average hotel price that I found was right around $142 a night during the peak season. Parking, you can expect to spend $23 a day to park. A family of four can expect to spend roughly $600 for a single day to Dollywood. Sounds kind of pricey, I know. But like I said, this park you don't wanna just spend one day at. I recommend getting a three day ticket and doing the water park as well. I'll be honest, Dollywood almost didn't make my list, but I just had to take into consideration how much they actually had to offer. If I can make a suggestion, I would have one person in the family get a season pass, which would give you free parking. Now they are pricey, running roughly about $300. However, you do get some perks with it, including two free tickets. You also are eligible for the pre-K passes. So if you have children under five years old, they would be free as long as you have a season pass. Like I said, Dollywood is a destination park. I would strongly recommend renting a cabin there in beautiful Pigeon Forge and enjoying a week in Pigeon Forge. For those of you that may be wondering why I did not choose Silver Dollar City as one of my most affordable parks, that answer is because there were far fewer choices when it came to affordable hotels in the area of Bronson, Missouri. So, moving on to my number nine most affordable park, Cedar Point. And this is America's rock and roller coast with admission prices for a single day ticket costing roughly $60, a single meal voucher running $18, and parking costing $30. Hotels in this area, you can expect to spend roughly $255 for an average price during the peak summer months, bringing the grand total for a family of four to roughly about $595. One of the cons about Cedar Point 
is the water park is actually a separate admission but it is included if you are staying as a guest in the hotel with certain packages they offer. However, you can expect to shell out some big bucks to stay in the on-site hotel. They do offer cabins. However, all of the accommodations that Cedar Point offer are very pricey. I recommend staying within 10 minutes of the park where you can find much more affordable hotels. One key piece of advice is if you book a hotel, book it early. I'm talking two to three months in advance. That way you get the best rate possible. Weekends around the Sandusky area are very expensive. So if you plan to go to Cedar Point, try and go on a weekday. Cedar Point has some of the largest crowds of any Cedar Fair Park. So keep that in mind. Weekends are always gonna be very busy. My number eight park, Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And this park has so much to offer. I know what you're thinking. How could Cedar Point be more expensive than Busch Gardens Williamsburg? But it all has to do with location. What I will say about this location is the average hotel prices in the area are much cheaper during the peak season than Sandusky, Ohio. They average around $150 per night. And I would just recommend going to this park during the off season. I think it's the best time of the year to go here during the winter, the fall months, early spring. It does get super busy here in the summertime. And this is one of those parks that offers events all year round. The hotel prices and accommodations are so much cheaper in the off season. I mean, you can literally get hotel rooms for like $60, $70 a night for a decent place. That being said, a single day for a family of four will cost roughly about $550. One thing I want to mention about Busch Gardens Williamsburg, they offer an awesome two, three day ticket option with meal plan included. And you can get this at a discounted rate throughout the season. They also offer something that I think is a fantastic thing is like a multi-day parking pass. That in itself can save you a lot of money if you do not have a season pass. Ticket prices vary so much at this park. I would say the absolute average price is roughly $80 a person and you can find some really good deals buy one get one half off things like that my number seven overall pick Six Flags Darien Lake and this place is absolutely wonderful it is one of the cleanest Six Flags parks I have ever been to it has an on-site water park that is free with admission it has so much to offer however it is in the absolute middle of nowhere I mean, there's not even many hotels in the area, if any. So it was very hard to judge where I should rank this. It does have an on-site hotel and a campground. So you can actually pitch a tent there for, I think, about $30, $35. So theoretically, this should be the absolute cheapest park to go to, with ticket prices only costing around $40. However, when I go to a theme park, I'm not trying to go and sleep out in a tent after I walked 10 miles throughout the theme park. So if that's what you're into, this would be the absolute cheapest theme park to go to. You could theoretically take your family here for $250. I did say I was gonna average everything out. So the cabin prices and hotel price there, it varies so much and you could easily spend up to $300 a night during the peak season on a weekend at the lodge. So it can get very pricey. It was so hard to come up with a price, but I'm going to say the average price to stay there per night was roughly $200. Keep in mind to stay at one of their cabins or at the lodge, it's a minimum of two nights. So I took this into consideration as well. Parking is $20, ticket prices are $40. This is a very affordable park, 
and definitely a destination park if you like to camp or you like cabins this is definitely an affordable park this would probably cost a family of four with meal plans parking and everything roughly four hundred and fifty dollars but that price like I said varies so much depending on what you're looking for in this park my number six most affordable theme park would be Knobles in Elysburg, Pennsylvania. This place has a lot to offer. Free parking, free admission. So for the sake of argument, I know what you're thinking. How can it offer these things and not be the top pick? Well, if you're like me and you like to go to a theme park to actually ride the rides, you're gonna pay for the all day ride pass. And this will run you roughly $55 a person. I think you get $5 off if you buy it online. I just want to say this is definitely a great option if you are bringing grandma along and she doesn't ride the rides. However, on weekends, it is pay per ride and some of their rides are costing roughly $4.50 per ride all the way down to $2 a ride for some of the kiddie rides. So it was brought to my attention by one of my subscribers, Sammy. I appreciate your insight, my friend. Basically, you have to pay per ride for a child five or under, which most of these theme parks, I know a lot of them are three or under, it's free admission. And most of these parks are offering pre-K passes. So five and under are free. So it can get very costly for a toddler to go on a ride and then mom and dad having to go on the ride with them. So that is my one, one flaw here with this park and why I ranked it at six. So combinations, they have an on-site campground with a bunch of different little cabins you can rent and during the peak season it's very hard to get them you have to book way in advance but they can cost roughly about 200 anywhere to 300 dollars a night so they can be very costly and when i did the average for this park i came up with roughly 400 to 450 it was very hard this was much like Six Flags Darien Lake where it was very hard to come up with an overall price for a family of four because there's a lot of different variables but definitely an awesome park and worth checking out. So my number five pick Hershey Park. I know everything there is to know about this park because it is my home park and I go here during the summer months. I'm here at least once or twice a week. I absolutely love this park. I have been going here for 30 years, so I know everything there is to know about it. Parking, $20. You save, I believe, $5 online by purchasing it there. You can also save a bunch of money online purchasing your tickets. Never buy your tickets at the gate at Hershey Park. You can also go to our local store, Giant Grocery Store. They offer a lot of discounted tickets but overall the ticket price is going to be an average of $62 for a single day ticket. I recommend somebody buying a season pass and then maybe getting a multi-day ticket for the rest of the family. Season passes go for roughly $175 if you get them at the beginning of the season for a full size pass. I don't recommend getting the king size unless you drink soda, then get that for the souvenir cup. The hotel accommodations in this area vary so much. If you stay in town Hershey, you're going to pay crazy prices. I'm talking four or $500 a night for some of the hotels. I recommend getting a place off of 81. You will save a lot of money. By off of 81, I'm talking 10, 15, 20 minutes from the park. They are very affordable, roughly $150 a night. The all day dining option is fantastic. It's roughly $37, $38, eat every 90 minutes. The water park is also included in your one day admission ticket. For a family of four to go to Hershey Park for a single day, would probably cost roughly $450. So my number four pick, Carowinds, where the Carolinas meet. And this park is absolutely wonderful. 
I know I say that a lot, but this park is an excellent park, offering a lot of good ride choices. I would say it's more similar to Canada's Wonderland, where they're starting to get more into the flat ride collection. But that being said, this is a very up and coming area. So hotel prices are very cheap because of the fact that there's so many options out there and they're all competing for your business. So you can really get some great rates at hotels. I know every time we've stayed here, I've paid less than $100 a night for a hotel in the area. So just depending on what day you go to the park, you can really save some money. So this is very much like Cedar Point. All of the Cedar Fair parks are very similar. All the dining plans are very similar. However, of course, the accommodations, the lodging, much more affordable for Carowinds. And Carowinds offers a water park that's free and included with your ticket and mission price. The single day ticket will cost you roughly about $55. So on average, that's a great price for a ticket when it includes a water park as well. A family of four can expect to spend about $400 for a day here. Number three, Kings Island. With one of the most solid lineups with ride collection and roller coaster collection at any theme park, this is one of my top favorite parks that I've been to. And I think it is just a phenomenal park definitely worth going to. The ticket prices are roughly $60 a day. You can usually get them a little bit cheaper, but roughly that's the price you're going to pay online after tax and everything. They have a water park, Soak City, which is included in your admission ticket, which by the way is one of the better water parks that Cedar Fair offers at any of their parks. The reason for having Kings Island as one of the top picks is basically they offer a lot of cheaper hotels in the area but much more affordable than cedar point which is just about three and a half hours north of king's island also with having the water park included that was another reason why the food at king's island is some of the best food that cedar fair parks have to offer and I would just say you have to try the blue ice cream if you get here. A family of four can expect to pay roughly $350 for a single day at Kings Island with a hotel and meal plans included in that price. If you plan to go to this park more than one day, I would suggest at least somebody in the party getting a season pass. They are very affordable running you roughly about $120 a person and giving you free parking for the two days that you go. They do offer two day tickets as well. But moving on to my number two park and that is Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. And in my opinion, the best Six Flags park in the country. No doubt this park has some of the best theming of any Six Flags park some of the best operations. San Antonio has some of the best hotel rates in the area of any city in the United States. We were there on a weekend when we went to visit this past summer and we did not spend more than $70 a night. So very affordable. They also have SeaWorld located right down the street. So if you check that out, this is a true destination park. I would definitely say you have to go to the water park, especially on a hot summer day. The heat there in San Antonio is no joke. So this park will run you about $30 for parking, roughly $60 for a single day admission, hotel prices costing roughly $70 to $100 a night. A family of four can expect to spend roughly $350 for a single day here. I would say Six Flags Fiesta Texas is definitely the premier park in Texas. And I would say Six Flags Over Texas is definitely worth checking out if you have enough time while you're staying in Texas to go and make the three hour drive north to visit that park. It is great. 
If you've made it this far into the video and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. Now for my number one most affordable park in America, and that would have to be King's Dominion in Joswell, Virginia. And this park has a water park that is also included with your admission. It also offers some of the best roller coasters in the country, Dominator, Intimidator 305, and Twisted Timbers. They have one of the most solid lineups of any park in the country with an awesome three, definitely a solid two lineup with Intimidator 305 and Twisted Timbers. This park has some of the best roller coasters in the country, my opinion, with an admission ticket price costing roughly $45 to $50 a day, parking costing roughly $30, and hotels in the area costing roughly $75 to $100 a night. A family of four can expect to spend roughly $325 to $350 for a single day at King's Dominion, making this my most affordable park in the country and my opinion a must-do park for sure for anybody that's a coaster enthusiast they do have one heck of a water park there as well. This park is located about an hour north of Busch Gardens Williamsburg. But that's my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. I just want to say there's definitely a couple more small parks that are a little more affordable than all of my choices. But I wanted to put destination parks up here for you guys. Really do appreciate it. Make sure to give this video a like.